It's almost two years since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the war has all but ground to a halt. This is the front line a year ago, marked in blue. This is the front line now. It's hardly moved. In 2022, the first year of the war, 130,000 square kilometers of territory changed hands between Russia and Ukraine. In 2023, it was 900. And this isn't through a lack of trying. Last year, there was a major counteroffensive from Ukraine, and Russia has made moves too. But a breakthrough hasn't come. And to understand why, BBC Verifies looked at three locations. They're all on the front line. First, Robotine. It's a small village that was retaken by Ukraine last summer. It's important because it's close to Russia's supply line to Crimea. Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. It's a vital location on the Black Sea. But while Ukraine retook Robotina, it hasn't been able to advance, which highlights our first reason the war isn't moving. One of the things that has been underestimated um, are uh, Russian defenses. So I think underestimating those defenses has been uh, one part of um, why there hasn't been a major breakthrough. The white lines on this map show Russia's multiple defenses south of Robotina. These include anti-tank defenses known as Dragon's Teeth and landmines too. The depth of Russia's defenses is one of the reasons the war has slowed. Another can be seen in the village of Krinky. It's in territory controlled by Russia on the eastern side of the Dnipro River. And after months of trying, Ukrainian forces managed to cross the water and take part of Krinky. But again, they struggled to push on. Not least because technology is dominating. Both sides are using weaponized drones known as UAVs. This Ukrainian video shows a Russian soldier being monitored by a drone and then attacked. Russia uses drones extensively too, just as both sides use artillery extensively. And all of this technology is shaping the war. The impact on restricting movement, pinning troops in place, uh, of the large volumes of artillery fire, particularly now from the Russian side, with Ukraine getting increasingly short of that ammunition, but also lots and lots of, of sort of first-person view UAVs, is making it very hard to generate offensive momentum without huge casualties. The strength of the weaponry, the strength of Russia's defences. Those are two reasons the war slowed. Our third location is Avdivka. It's a town close to the Russia-held city of Donetsk, and there's been fierce fighting there for months. It's mostly held by Ukraine. But again, progress has been elusive, not least because of how many troops Russia has. Every day there are new forces, regardless of the weather, regardless of anything, of losses. And the losses are very heavy. The US estimates that 13,000 Russian troops were killed or wounded just in this part of the front line between October and December last year. Russia is able to sustain these losses in part because prisoners, such as these men, are being released en masse to fight. Russia's ability to continue, despite these losses of men and equipment, is one factor in Avdivka. There's another two. We don't have enough ammunition, unfortunately. We are outnumbered in everything. More broadly, Ukraine's defense minister says a shortage of ammunition is a very real and pressing problem. And this lack of ammunition connects to a final factor, the decline in military aid from the West. This month, the EU signed off $53 billion worth of military aid. Last month, the UK pledged two and a half billion pounds worth. That's over $3 billion. But in Washington, new funding is yet to be approved. And as a whole, Western military aid dropped sharply in the later months of last year. If that continues, the war may start moving again, but not as the West would want. It's really critical that Western leaders understand that they need to act quickly to stop this becoming uh, a scenario where far from a stalemate, the Russians are actually starting to really make offensive progress again. Maybe the US will deliver new funding, but underneath this issue, there's an uncomfortable truth. Even if the money is there, and even if you ramp up the production, it doesn't mean that you can outcompete Russia at this stage. All of which means that Ukraine at vast cost, is pursuing a victory which, for now, appears out of reach. But it fights on.